Hi everyone. Uh, this is the DSC community call, and we have another call for I think about three months or so. And there is a few news that um, we want to go through today. But if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to just unmute yourself or raise your hands and say something, and then we can probably address the question. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we, you shall see. So the first thing is we always welcome sessions. So if you have anything you want to talk about and if you want to present something you're working on uh, regarding DSC, machine config, or anything related to that, um, even if it's a five minute demo or if it's a 20 minute presentation, an hour presentation, then please uh, submit to the DSC community. It's an open um, uh, request for paper or CFP. Um, we have this open and you just tell us when you want to present, when you will be available, and then we can book you uh, through session eyes. So the next thing I want to say is we had PSConf for you in June, and then we've released in, I believe, early August, uh, we've released the recordings, and you can access all the recordings. There's about 90 videos or so um, on the HTTP PowerShell.video, and then you can access all the recordings there. And if you don't already, please follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn, so then you get to know all the news. And you can have all the sessions there, and I've just listed the few that are really specific to DSC or to, uh, like there's one which is not exactly DSC, but it's a sampler, which is the module we use. Um, and it's been done by Raymond, which you can see in his car here in the call. And then otherwise you can see pretty much, uh, maybe Bartek is not here today, but everyone else um, is on the call, maybe not Paul as well. But if you, uh, so that's all the, the talks. We, I really recommend you to know about those topics. So go and watch the videos if you're not familiar already. Uh, there's a lot of good content there and there's many, many more that I haven't listed. I only listed the DSC related or DSC specific ones. We also organize a mini conference on Gather. So I don't know if you've seen the announcements, uh, but uh, PSConf U is creating an online event uh, the 27th of September. And it's on gather.town. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I will show you very quickly what it looks like. But uh, the idea is for everyone to just meet up. And then there's a few sessions, some from the PowerShell team and uh, some from other people. You can find the agent down line. Um, the idea is we have two sessions slots, so it's quite short. You can expect to be uh, two, like around two and a half hours of content. And then everything else will be just, you know, meeting with people, talking with people and, um, you know, video chat and discuss whatever you want. If you want to leave, you can leave. That's fine. The only thing you have to do to be able to attend is to register. So then we can send you the link uh, to be able to attend this. And if you look at the videos that you've seen and then you want to follow up, that's the, a very good place. We try to get all the speakers we can to come over. They will have their little booth specific to the speakers. And then they can just uh, sit down there. And then if you want to reach to them, you can just go and talk about the sessions, ask for the questions and engage with them. Um, so a few more notes to add. So Johan fixed the DSC community website. So that, that's been done a while ago, but last time we had a, uh, we had a meetup, um, uh, we had a community call. Uh, it was not working, so he fixed that. Uh, so every time that we push a change, everything is refreshed. Uh, session eyes, I mentioned it again. Please submit sessions if you want to speak and, and say something. And uh, we had issues with PS Gallery keys. All of them have been updated. That's been done a while ago, but just wanted to mention it again. And we had an issue with, I think it was X Web Administration that uh, has been upgraded. So now it's been renamed to Web Administration DSC. But this latest version hasn't been uh, pushed to the gallery yet. Uh, because we had a naming conflict, uh, we were not owner of that package, which has been fixed. We just need to know where is that one. And without further ado, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, I want to actually ask Jody to take the mic and then tell us something that you already announced that during PSConfigu and uh, at least online just after PSConfigu. And what is that big news? Yeah, definitely. Hi, everybody. 
Uh, nice to see some familiar faces. So a couple of announcements from the machine config side of the house. Um, and yep, you heard that correctly. So at PS ConfiU, um, as well as through a couple of doc updates, we have changed our name recently from guest configuration to machine configuration. So we're working to bridge the gap there and make that as easy a, a switch as possible, uh, but don't want anybody to get too confused. So machine configuration is the new name. Um, Awesome. Second update. Um, I know that there were a couple questions in our last meeting about the private preview of being able to, or sorry, the public preview of being able to apply configuration settings inside your machines. And we're really excited to close the loop there and announce that our set scenario is now GA. So this represents the apply and monitor and apply and autocorrect assignment types. Um, and alongside this release, we have some really cool new updates to our portal experience, as well as a new built in policy to set the required version of TLS. Um, at a scope of your choosing. So really excited to to announce this feature that we hope we'll be able to uh, enable some new scenarios for you all and really looking for feedback again. So please feel free to reach out if anything's not working as expected or if you have any suggestions again on to, as to things that we should be thinking about. So really value your feedback and happy to answer any questions about the GA or anything like that at this point, if anyone has any. Thank you. So if you have any questions, feel free to get it ready, put it on the chat, and then um, and then Jody is there for a bit. Uh, and otherwise, we will have to invite her again to, to talk more about it. Yeah. Um, I'll assume no questions means everything's working perfectly, no bugs. And th There's an email, yeah. I think, that uh, Jan <laughs> sent it to you. I don't know if you replied to that one. Yep, I got that one. Good. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you. Um, and the next thing, OK, I wanted to share something else first. And uh, OK, so if you're not following, uh, if you're not following us, yeah, there's also the so there's the DSC community Twitter. Every news that we have, we use uh, we use Twitter to announce it. There's also a LinkedIn group. So if you want to uh, just join the LinkedIn group, we're just starting this, trying to maybe communicate as well on LinkedIn. If you're not on Twitter, I uh, just wanted to make sure that we can share news and, and we can reach out to you people. And, uh, and obviously we can exchange as well on the LinkedIn group. Um, this is the uh, this is the PSCon for you uh, videos. You can see there's a playlist PSCon for you 2022. There's also all the recordings that we had before in the channel. And uh, this is where you can access everything, and you can access um, all the all the information that all the sessions that uh, have been recorded. So that's all this uh, the website has been updated, so all of those uh, you can access to uh, this website again, and and this is what Gather looks like. So if you're coming to PSCon for you Minicon, then this is the experience that you can expect. Uh, basically, what it is is you're a little person there, which is your avatar, and then we've made little booth with all the speakers for PSCon for you, and there's also booth from sponsors, from the sponsors, and we've got bigger booth, and you can see there's one for the DSC community here. So if you want to come and just chat DSC, you can come in there, and then you can all meet there. And obviously, we've also made one for Microsoft, so the PowerShell team probably can attend and come here, and then. We've also made one for PowerShell.org folks because they have all the very big events that they can, if you have questions about. Um, I know James Petty and uh, John will be there, so uh, you can ask them any questions you have regarding those uh, two events as well. So that's the preview for uh, PSConfigu Minicon, which is on 27th of September. If you have any questions, then follow us as well on Twitter and reach out to us that way. So uh, with that being said, no, I will ask uh, Mikey, yes, Mikey is there. Perfect. So, Mikey, what have you been up to recently? If you're ready, yeah, you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, over the last couple of weeks to, I guess, probably verging on a little more than two months now, um, we decided to take a stab at uh, documenting DSC v2. Um, if you had been to that doc site sometime before, I don't know, two or three weeks ago when we got uh, deployed, there was an overview and nothing else. Uh, and you had to go to the v11 docs to get anything useful. So I'll share here in a sec. Uh, 
make sure things are readable since I have a giant 4K monitor. Um, and then I'll kind of talk through this a little bit. OK. Right, so um, these are all live. Uh, this is the state that it's in right now. I was really, really hoping that I could get a uh, extra document uh, done in time to show off to all of you, but uh, unfortunately the build system is mad at me, so uh, no dice there. But uh, that being said, this structure looks pretty different from uh, what you might be familiar with in V11. This is uh, pretty all up uh, rewrite and um, refocusing. So the V2 docs are largely targeted at people who are doing uh, machine configuration. All of the uh, docs around uh, using the DSL are specific to using it with machine configuration, right? Because in V2 forward, that's the only supported use case for the DSL. Um, that's what it's there for. Uh, the resource documentation is being updated and improved um, because that's universal, right? So this is still early days, but um, what this amounted to was trying to give you a place where there's a whole bunch of clarity. What doesn't work in, in V2 anymore? Um, what's it for? How does it work? And then trying to turn our attention to taking some of the older documentation and then asking ourselves, OK, well, if we were rewriting it in 2022, because I am, how would we do it if we were starting over on it, right? Um, so one of the big things is it's now broken down into just a You'll notice there's a lot less in the way of docs here on the uh, TOC on the side. Um, restructured it so that there's some concepts that you can go through, and then there's a couple of how-to guides. We have a backlog of stuff to add. Um, the concept doc that I'm adding is a uh, complete look at uh, DS class-based DSC resources. Um, and uh, the other interesting thing, which I can talk about in a sec if anybody cares, uh, the other interesting thing here is um, I pulled over PSDSC resources uh, since with V2 forward, um, you're probably not wanting to use the in-the-box resources, particularly not with machine configuration, right? Um, these had only been documented on GitHub to this point, so I went through, uh, cleaned up, and rewrote to some extent a lot of the documentation, and then... Uh, work things out so that there's a sort of standardized structure for how these docs are presented, which I hope is easier for people to find and more useful. Please do give me feedback. Um, it should look fairly familiar to what you're used to if you've been trawling commandlet reference for forever. And then the other interesting thing is um, I went through all of the uh, example code in the PSDSC resources uh, module and turned those into actual documentation pages, um, sort of expanded on them, added some clarity. Uh, and then they give examples of using it with invoke DSC resource, which was up until this point, I think a little bit hard for people to kind of get their heads around um, how that would actually work. And then again, with uh, configuration. Um, one important note uh, regarding configuration um, is that uh, actually, I think I need to fix this because I found out recently that it does work. Um, where are we? Feature set, that's the one I want. Uh, so this is actually a bug that I remember that exists, so I have to go fix it. But um, the uh, um, set uh, resources, the um, composite resources here, um, I have them uh, without the configuration keyword, if it'll load. Sorry, my internet's being a bit goofy today, right? Uh, oh, sorry, they're, no, I had it the wrong way around. So these don't work with invoke DSC resource, they do still work with configuration. Um, so I have it documented and clear there what resources can and can't be used with which model. Um, and the reason for that is the composite resources are uh, configurations that define what's getting called. Uh, invoke DSC resources and parsing the DSL, so that'll just never work. They're just compilation um, time. So the, the, the composites right. only make sense during compilation, not during invocation. That's why they won't work. Exactly. Yep. Um, so uh, 
man, I was so excited to get the class-based one done for you, but that's okay. So yeah, uh, all up kind of redesigned reapproach to the documentation, making sure that we got PSDSC resources uh, documented properly and, and put in place uh, here. And then continuing to add uh, how-to guides and concepts, uh, probably a couple of short tutorials. Um, my goal uh, for this doc set is that when you show up here looking for information, you find what you're looking for and whether or not this is the place that you want to be looking at, right? If you're using if, if you're using the pull server and that's what you're trying to kind of build your workflow around, you don't want these docs. You want the V11 docs. Um, that being said, the reason for that is the pull server is gone uh, in V2 and forward, right? And it's not coming back in V3. So um, just be aware of that. Uh, I won't so, go so far as to give you advice for your operations. So we've um, so we've discussed before, and I think Sean uh, did a presentation on the explain a bit. You know what was the goal between the different versions of the DSC? But I want to repeat that every single time. So I'm going to ask you again the question. <laughs> okay, so so there's you know you said like this is the docs for partial DSC 2.0. What are right. the others, and when do you want to use one or the other, and right. uh, on why, pretty much? Sure. Um, so the first thing to say is that there are uh, three versions of our docs right now. Don't look at 3.0 because I haven't written anything. Uh, this is functionally what the V2 docs looked like previously, uh, and you'll see it's just an overview. Um, the V11 docs, if you are using Windows PowerShell, First of all, those are the docs you want, flat out. Um, if you are using a version of PowerShell before 7.2 and you're using uh, the pull server um, and you're using uh, or you're pushing configs, if you're using the DSL uh, to compile configurations and apply those to your nodes um, without any other tooling, you still want V11, right? You might want to plan a transition away from that over time. But that's where the answers to your questions all live. Um, V2 forward is for two particular use cases. One, you're using machine configuration. That's where all of our improvements uh, and investment in the docs are going uh, right now is into the V2 docs. Um, so that's one supported use case. The other is if you are using invoke DSC resource directly, or you're wanting to understand how that works for integration with another higher order configuration management tool like Ansible or Puppet or Chef or whatever, um, then the V2 docs are going to be the ones that are getting most of our investment. V11 isn't frozen in the sense that if you find problems and issues, we'll certainly fix stuff. Um, but our investment right now is in making the V2 docs as good as we can, because uh, that's the current stable release. Um, v3 makes some even further changes um so uh in v3 uh right now the only um dsc resource definition type that is going to work for you uh if you use the v3 preview is class-based dsc resources um so that is eventually going to be where We'll be focusing on our uh, docs as, as the V3 preview moves forward. Um, but that's something important to keep in mind. Right now, you probably want to be looking at the docs for V11 or V2, depending on whether or not you're using machine config or um, you're still using a pull server. Uh, and V3 will eventually be kind of where we're headed for all time, right? Uh, to kind of double down on the platform of DSC as it is. So to ask a bit more specifically between the V2, so leaving aside the PowerShell 5.1, uh, Windows right. PowerShell 5.1, um, leaving that aside. So what's the difference between the main difference between uh, 2.0, like the 205 currently, PowerShell DSC 2.0, and PowerShell uh, DSC 3.0 uh, beta? What's the main difference between the two? Ex you know, obviously you already mentioned the uh, version three only supports class-based, but right because there there's else? no LCM. Yes, right. no, no, LCM's no. fully ripped. 
Yeah, so there's, I think the, the, the point I'm trying to make is like there's the 2.0 and the 3.0. So both of them are not using the LCM, but um, right. there's one thing that the 2.0 supports is the MOF based resources. Well, right. as you said, uh, the um, the 3.0 beta doesn't support MOF based resources. Correct. But uh, the 3.0 beta, I think, is preferred when you run on Linux. Right. So for specifically for machine config, you know, that's right. the, the scenario. So that's something like really to to bear in mind. If you're doing Windows machine config, think about the PowerShell DSC.2.0. These are the docs that you want. And then if you're doing some Linux, it's similar, but only class based resource. And, and that's the 3.0 beta. Right, and that is that's why I'm primarily investing uh, when it comes to uh, documentation around resource development in class-based resources. Right, that's what's getting most of the love and attention right now, since MOF-based is going away. Yep. All right, perfect. Has anyone questions for Mike? And maybe. Um, I don't know, maybe what what would you like to see in the docs? You know, feel free to put that on the chat. I won't check the chat actually, but I'm sure Daniel is. Um, so if you if you have anything that you would like to say, or oh, there's not enough documentation, what is missing? What do you think is missing? And uh, what maybe was difficult for you to learn when you started learning about DSC? Doom, doom, doom. So, um, when so a question for you, Mikey, uh, when do you think you will be finished doing the 2.0 docs and start uh, maybe investing on the 3.0? Uh, well, it's uh, hard to answer on account of docs are never really done. Um, but that being said, most of what I'm investing in applies to V3, right? Because I'm, I'm focused on uh, right now um, resource authoring. Um, the thing that I would say is that the docs for V2 um, have sort of all of the uh, all of the existing information that was in V11, right? Um, trimmed of the stuff that no longer applies. Uh, V3 is going to go through a, a similar cycle, but most of these files are just going to pull straight across. Um, but rather than maintain two versions and try to remember to keep them both in sync right now, I'm just doing the V2. I don't have a timeline yet for when I'm going to do um, the V3 documentation. Um, but when you land on the site, it'll automatically take you to the V2 because that's current stable. So you would have to go and select V3. So right now, the easiest thing to do is just go to the docs and read the default view. Jason? Yes. Oh yeah, I was just going to add in that um, the uh, uh, yeah until we're early days on DSC v3, and as as we make some decisions and we get some clarity uh, around directions, we will be adding more docs. But one of the challenges that that Mikey has is that he can't add what we don't know yet. So we're working on it. And just keep in mind that on DSC v3, it is early days yet. So um, we will be uh, working on those as time gets out. And while I don't have anything to, to announce today, we will be talking with everyone more about DSC v3 in the near future as well, as we start getting some information that we'd like for people to talk to. And this is a great time for me to once again, hey, Gail, I appreciate the passion. Love it. Thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so that's great to hear. Like, it's it's great to hear that. Like, it, you know, there's the what we know of DSC v3 right now that we discussed, but there's also all the things that we don't know. Well, the PowerShell team doesn't know, and then you know, thinking about. You know what what is you know what is DSC v3 what is it going to look like and what will be implemented and so on and so on so there's no timeline there's nothing there but uh but it's definitely something that people are you know eager to know about and i know that the the powershell team um and and the guest config team or machine config team uh, is also uh discussing a lot so uh so just again remember DSCV2 is for, uh, especially for use with machine config. DSCV1 is the, the old uh, Windows PowerShell. And uh, DSCV3, we're talking about the module, the PowerShell Desired State Configuration Module. Um, so all of uh, the, the V3 
the beta one is mostly for uh, Linux uh, in machine config. Uh, so that's the that's the big idea. I want everyone to know because you know we repeat it probably every single time, but we still get questions. So uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, Mikey, so what is the recommended way to write a, a, a DSC resource these days? What would you recommend? Because uh, you're writing the docs about you know how to write this. So yeah. What what do you recommend? Uh, well, I think as soon as my concept doc on class-based DSC resources lands, it'll be pretty obvious which one you should do. Now, um, I, I do recommend if if you are net new writing a DSC resource, you should write it class-based, right? Because you know right now, moth-based has a limited timeline, right? It's, it's not carrying over to V3. Um, uh, and if you are running into trouble writing a class-based DSC resource, let me know where the docs are failing you because I really want to make that not just doable, but delightful, right? I want to make that as good an experience as that can be for you. Um, so if there are questions or uh, ambiguities that need to be resolved, I'm really happy to take those on. If you file issues with us, that works out great. Um, if you're not sure how to file that issue, um, you can hit me up and then I'll either help you write it or point you in the right direction if that's all you need. Um, but if you go to, uh, I'll grab our issue picker real quick uh, because that will tell you what you need. So in the in the meantime, Jason or Michael, um, can you just remind everyone why do we get rid of uh, moth based resource, specifically the moth based resource? Yeah, so the, I hear a lot of people who are new to DSC saying, oh man, so does this mean that I have to go learn how to be a developer and write things in classes as I'm learning DSC? And the answer is no, it's actually a lot easier to write class-based resources. It just sounds really intimidating. So in the past, you know, there, for as you're writing a resource, you're writing get dash target resource test and set and then you know, exporting your modules, but then you had to go write your schema.moth file. And the point of schema.moth was, you can think about it like the schema of, um, you can kind of think about it sort of like the schema of what parameters were available. And that all loaded that information into WMI on Windows. And then whenever you went into something like VS Code or ISC to write uh, a configuration script, then that's how IntelliSense knew, you know, this is the list of properties. These properties are required. Here's the list of valid um, uh, valid values, the validation set that can um, be set for these properties and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so by moving to classes, all of that information is sort of like taken care of by the language. And so, number one, it helps us you know, to kind of relieve dependencies on WMI, but it actually becomes really simple. Now, I would say if if you're starting with a blank piece of paper, so to speak, just an empty development window, and, you know, you're building your PSM1 file from scratch, then, yeah, classes is going to be something you got to kind of spend some time figuring out. But just look at the docs, go out and look at the community examples. You can pretty much take the entire class portion with the exception of the uh, property names, the name of the resource itself and the name of the um, type for uh, that, that sets going to return or sorry, that gets going to return. You can pretty much copy and paste the entire class portion um, as you're writing a resource. And then I just use get dash resource, set dash resource and test dash resource as my function names. And then really, I mean, I've got it down now to where I just copy and paste in the class section of my module, write, get, set, and test, and I don't have to write the schema moth. So I, I spend a lot less time. Like if you remember uh, when DSC first came out, we had DSC resource designer, and you could call a commandlet and give it a hash table of everything that you needed to know about the resource, and it would go create your schema that moth file for you. Uh, I mean, that thing still exists. But it does. It's a lot easier to just write it in classes. Yes, and and the problem was especially when you wanted to edit it, then you had to change that script, rerun that script to regenerate the the schema, and then you know managing that was a bit of a pain. With the classes, everything is defined within your class, and it's much simpler. Yes, I agree. And and yes, you're so, well, as you're saying, like the class is just the you know what uh, all it together. 
because you know it's something that should have a get set and test but everything else can and should probably be imperative commands that just you know powershell functions that you call you get the thing you set or you test the thing and then you set the thing so yes perfect thanks michael sweet is there any question um any more question maybe oh michael you were you were searching for something before we no, I thought I thought we oh, left. Yeah, no, the, yeah, I I put the uh, the issue picker for uh, the DSC docs uh, down in the chat. Um, the other thing I would say so before I uh, joined the docs writing team, I was working at Puppet. And my last big project there, well, my second to last big project there was Puppet DSC, um, which meant reading a lot of DSC resource implementations. Um, and Sean just shared a link that I'm super stoked about. Got the build process working, and now uh, we have uh, the concept doc, uh, which I'm really stoked for. Um, but to finish my thought, uh, the thing that I liked uh, from an integration perspective is that I can learn a whole lot about what uh, the DSC resource uh, actually requires and expects from like a, an integrating vendor perspective. Um, and an artifact of that is that there's a lot more safety uh, possible uh, when you're defining your uh, DSC resources uh, um, with classes, right? Between classes and enums. Um, so a lot better uh, control uh, and validation that you're going to be able to get there. And when you get that validation is is hugely useful uh, in my experience. Um, and I hope that this document uh, can kind of explain why that is uh, and show you some good practices. Um, this is not a walkthrough of writing a DSC resource. Think about this as uh, documenting how a class-based DSC resource is structured and what the requirements for the properties and methods are, right? Um, I will be updating the how to guides uh, to kind of get at both a simpler example, uh, one that does very, very little, uh, just to kind of show you end to end. How do I go from I have uh, VS Code open uh, and nothing in it to uh, I now have a working, uh, at least minimally, uh, DSC resource, and then we'll do some more advanced ones after that. Amazing, thank you, sir. So it's it's amazing to see that Sean was working behind and then make it, you know, publish yeah. that. So that's the release live, friends. That's perfect. Thank you very much. So the, yeah. as you can see, I can see from the scroll bar, you know, that is, you know, there's a fair bit of content there that we can go through and then we can all um, chip in. Like if there's anything we think is missing or maybe should be done differently, then obviously feel free to reach out to Mike, uh, to well, to to anyone I guess in the team, and then. Um, and then they can we can make it better and then make sure that we share uh, we share that with everyone yeah that's perfect oh i, I know what i'm going to do just after the call <laughs> i'm going to read that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um absolutely seriously uh we don't just accept feedback uh neither sean or i are particularly precious right uh the point of the docs is that they help you uh, so if there are problems with that, it's it's not that we're OK with hearing it. We want to hear it, right? Uh, it's you're going to see things that we don't. That's just the nature of writing. And we definitely uh, are stoked to get feedback. Um, so don't feel like it's uh, complainy or whining or whatever. The point is that it helps you. Uh, so do submit feedback if you have it. And if you don't want to give it publicly, you can DM me and yell about how bad my writing is. That's fine too. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Perfect, thank you. I got some issues with my camera and I think my internet connection as well. And that's the beauty <laughs> of being in a hotel. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. And. Uh, yeah, so uh, Dan, you have things you want to ask people to do. We we always have things we want to. Uh, <laughs> we would we would love people to help us on. I think that's the just the just uh, submissions of um, fixes and improvements to the DSC community resources, and also 
coming along, giving us a hand with reviewing, code reviewing, improvements, just anything you can do. I think that's, I think everyone's um, uh, super busy these days, but yeah, any help is always gratefully uh, wanted, especially we want to move all those resources to class-based. That's always been, and the move to PESTA 5. Um, and it's a lot of, you know, it's not so much exciting work. It's it's a thankless task, but I think the community will really love it, and it it will help us maintain those resources better in future. And as as Mikey says, the, the class based is such a, a and and um, such a better uh, implementation. And as Michael mentioned, so yeah, please give us a hand if you would like to give us a hand. You don't know where to start. Reach out to one of us. Um, Gail, myself, Johan, anyone will 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 point you in the right direction and and share with you some issues that are a great place to get started on. Thanks, Gail. Thanks. So obviously we don't want to people to just try and then you you know struggle. So if there's any like if you know, anyone has any question, obviously they can bring this uh, during those DSE community calls. Like we can address the questions on you know what's missing. And then obviously we're also available usually on the chat, uh, much more on the chat than GitHub issues. There's too many repositories and too many things we subscribe to to see notifications. So if you open an issue and if you want it to be looked at, please, please, please go on the PowerShell um, Slack or Discord in the DSC channel and then find us. Uh, that's the way we can um, actually see the issues that you raise or the pull requests that you raise and then we can have a look and maybe help you out or just do a code review merge but if you just wait this in um, uh, on github unfortunately there's too many of them for us to be able to see them and remember to look at them when we have time so come aka.ms ps slack or aka.ms um, uh, what is it the other one ps discord and then on the dsc channel come and talk to us yeah, yes, yes, exactly. At us. Yeah, and that uh, helps for the notifications. And OK, so remember as well, so the DSC community calls is every six weeks. So in six weeks, we will have the next one. Uh, please try to be on social media wherever the, we can reach you. So then you can uh, learn about uh, you know, the everything like every effort that the community is doing when there's a new session that has been recorded, maybe by someone in the community, uh, participate in your local um, user groups. And I have a question for everyone now. What do you think is the limit is limiting the most the DSC community to grow and people to adopt uh, DSC, whether it's the, the old DSC, the new machine config, all these kind of things? So what do you think is the biggest struggle? Uh, Marvin, I think you can uh, unmute and tell us. We've got your hands raised. Yeah, in, in, indeed. And uh, first of all, I appreciate the call. Uh, and uh, the, I, I've uh, gonna ask this, even though I, I you know, I kind of uh, reached out to Mikey on Twitter and he helped me out with this. Uh, but I just wanted to ask, you know, you were talking about what's uh, preventing um, people from adopting DSC and I know for a long time and this is speaking on version 1.1 uh, which I basically just started uh, implementing um, uh, was the the lack of uh, like tooling um, luckily you know we got for version 1.1 we do have the ability to use uh, some higher level configuration management utilities you know like uh, Chef or Ansible or you know Puppet because they've got ways to invoke the DSC resources that are installed on the box. Um, but I did reach out to Mikey over Twitter to ask uh, specifically because in my organization they don't really want us to do any third party stuff. You know we're doing a migration to a cloud and they don't really want us to have a third party dependency on like a, a Chef or um, or anything like that. Uh, so what, you know, there, there, there seems to be a lack of kind of like upper or higher level tooling for DSC. So, I mean, I'm making it work uh, because I'm basically, you know, taking the configuration, wrapping it in a PS1 script and I, you know, slip it into the image and then there you go. So when the box gets torn down uh, or when the box gets spun up, I invoke the, I, I call the script, it does the configuration, it works. Um, but now, you know, if the local configuration manager is going away, 
and you know you have something a situation like in my company where you know i know that there's this azure policy manager or or whatever that is that could be used but you know that's a third party that they're not going to let me use what what should you know is is there any thought to to those type of situations uh you know to to do maybe developing some tooling or um you know anybody have any thoughts on on uh, on that direction Oh boy, you're on mute, you're muted, Kyle. Daniel. <laughs> Sorry, I said I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was trying to look for Michael and Jason if they wanted to take this this one to answer. What's Microsoft's position about this? You know, what about you know? Is there's a lack of tooling, or you know, the LCM is going away? So what's the what's the Microsoft's position? And then I can give you like a, my point of view of. Uh, what the yeah, I can jump in. I, I, there, there's two parts to what you just said, Gail. So um, the first part is, is just at the heart of tooling. So we've invested really heavily in a new module called guest configuration. Um, I don't know if Jody will rename the module or not, but it's really comprehensive. Uh, I mean, I, I actually refactored a resource this morning uh, for a test, and it's really just run two commandlets and you're done. <laughs> it, it does the whole thing for you after you've got the resource done. Um, so that's a good one to take a look at. Uh, if yeah, Would it make sense to use it outside of the machine config space? Maybe. Um, a lot of what it's doing is helping you to evaluate quality. So if your resource works in that zip file, it's going to work in just about any environment. And then as far as the uh, you know, with LCM, without LCM, that's something we've been talking about lately because we do have a handful of scenarios now that are interested in some sort of a new LCM. Our initial thinking, and this is partially just based on how many developers we can put towards the work at any one point in time, but our, our initial thoughts for right now are either we or the or, or like the, the team plus the community could work on whether it's just a blog post or a GitHub project, I don't know, that would just take a configuration. It could be as a script. It could be as a JSON file. It could be as a YAML file. YAML is probably the most human readable. And then just consume that script, loop through it, call invoke DSC resource for each thing in that config. The, the differences here are automation versus orchestration. So that's really automation. That's a task, right? That's I want to configure this server one time, and I'm just going to give you the config in whatever format you want, and then loop through invoke DSC resource, and you're done. You could also just have a script do that, by the way. It doesn't have to parse a configuration and do it. You could have a script that just loops invoke DSC resource a bunch against a bunch of hash table inf information. It's just that in source control, having something in a format like YAML is really nice for a non-technical person to review long term on more like the orchestration side so azure machine config right now is our go-to like it, it is the pull service um and and the investment we've made there is arm the api for azure really i mean like the backbone of azure is acting as pull server so when you deploy either deploy a machine in the cloud or register a hybrid machine, you just create a record that says, here's the list of configurations that should go out to that machine, whether it's in Azure or in AWS or in Google or in your data center, wherever. And then there's an agent and as the agent wakes up and, and calls back to the service, just like with pull server, then it gets the list of configurations, but then all of the reporting and all that kind of stuff, all the security is actually writing on that backend service. So it gets all the benefits of that for free in terms of you know, being able to use resource graph and being able to, you know, use a centralized identity service for um, authentication and that kind of stuff. So that's the way I'm thinking about it right now is like short term, we can solve automation long term, we can keep getting feedback and maybe we've got it right now for orchestration. Maybe we need to invest further, but we'll just keep listening. Yep. So, so I want, so I want to go back. So, so from what you're saying, I want to simplify a little bit what I believe is Microsoft's position. So you have PSDSC, so PowerShell DSC, uh, on mainly talking about, you know, what uh, Mikey showed about the docs. You know, that part is the 
uh, the, the underlying platform. And then you have machine config, which is like the whole service that goes on top of it, which is the Azure control plane for managing, you know, your systems and that just stores the, all the integration from, um, you know, you write, you write uh, with code what you want it to be, you know, uh, what your, you want your system to converge to, and then you use machine config to, uh, to eventually converge those things uh, through, uh, through machine config. I won't go into the details. So there's those two things. So if machine config does that part where it does the this kind of LCM that was doing this specifically for Windows in a very specific way, and as many people complain, uh, it was never doing the way people wanted to do, you know, with maintenance window was one of the example, even if there's a workaround that's been built around that. Basically, if machine config is doing something different, that means uh, the community can also, you know, invoke those DSC resources in a scriptable way, as Michael said. So the question is, you know, are we going to do that? And and that's a good question. And Gail, um, did, yeah, can I ahead. interject? Um, sure. Yeah, and I totally agree with uh, how you're assessing it. The way that you know that that I read um, what Michael was saying is 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 the same way. Essentially, we are heavily invested in tooling. It's just the tooling that we're heavily invested in is machine config, and that may not be the tooling that you want to use. And if that's the case, then uh, you know one of the uh, the best parts about DSC is. It's a platform, not a product. So as a platform, it's completely extensible. So maybe you like some of the work that we're doing and maybe you wanna do some of that work on premises. And this is where the PowerShell team plus the community can, can really work best together on this is that maybe we've developed some great tooling in machine config and maybe you want it in a different place. Well, let's have that conversation. Maybe that's community driven. Uh, maybe it's uh, partially driven with the PowerShell team, but the best part is because DSC is a platform, that's, it gives you the ability to um, uh, build the tooling that you need and move forward. Yeah, and basically when you have a MOF, then it's about you know reading that MOF, and then when you have the MOF, well, you can find what's in the moth and then you say well you know you can just iterate through everything that you have in the moth in the moth sorry uh, and then you can move to the next one oops sorry you can move to the next one and then see which one is the current resource and then you can keep moving to the one you want a few times let me just do verbose preference to make sure going and then you can go through all the MOFs, all the resources within your MOF, MOF, which is what they were talking about. And you see you have a registry there. And what you can do is also, well, if you have this, you can start, you know, trying to get the information from there. There's a bug because I found a bug in uh, PSDS CV2, but let's do um, uh, maybe the next one's not gonna, well, I can do the set actually. And let's do the set current resource. I probably don't want to do that, but just for you, I will do it. Ah, this is an issue. I was. <laughs> it's probably the Invoke DSC resource uh, uh, issue on 205. I was talking to uh, to Mike about this a few days ago. Um, anyway, basically, it's just about you know iterating through everything you have in your MOF, and then it's a graph, and then you can just go first one. Uh, do you get get it? see if it's compliant or not compliant to what you expect. And then if it's not compliant and you want to, you can remediate it. So it's just about going through those things. And it's easy, it's it's not difficult in itself, it's just a script, on, which is why I just showed the principle there. That's nothing public or uh, actually very advanced at the moment, but that's, you know, the principle is relatively simple. I just wanted to prepare that as a proof of concept, but I haven't had time to prepare something more than that. Yeah. So that's the idea. You can One, read them off, compile them off, and then you can just say, well, I've loaded them off. I can just go iteratively through each resource in them off and then get set test manually, even if it's automated in a script. I'm not using... One thing I want to uh, highlight just for a sec, kind of circling back onto the LCM versus machine config uh, type thing, is that... Um, the advantages of a higher order configuration management tool like machine configuration or puppet or chef or whatever um 
something that uh, became really clear to me when I was working at Puppet is um, changing the state of one machine or five machines or 10 machines is relatively easy. There is so much work that goes into operationalizing your configuration management overall that you do not want to hand jam yourself, right? Um, Role-based access control, auditing, logging, mm -hmm. uh, rollbacks, uh, compositional um, configuration. There's so much stuff that goes around that that the LCM and the poll server wasn't doing for you um, that machine config is is doing for you. Uh, and, and those kinds of things are like uh, really hard problems to solve. Uh, and so that's something that I, I think uh, should kind of maybe keep in mind um, is that, yes, the LCM is gone. Machine config is doing things the LCM wouldn't really do on its own, right? And and the, the primitives that the uh, poll server gave you, you still then had to go and build extra stuff on top of. Um, so uh, I would keep that in mind. And that's the same is true at, of all the other higher order CM tools that use DSC. Um, Puppet Chef and Ansible all use invoke DSC resource, whereas Salt uses uh, the DSL. Um, but that also means that Puppet Chef and Ansible are already mostly ready for V2, V3, um, because that's the way that they're interacting with it, right? They're interacting with it uh, as a platform. Um, so it's just a note that I wanted to, to make clear for folks. Yeah, I would also, so to go in and like, yeah, to emphasize on one part is like, there's one thing to uh, define in code the configuration of a machine or several machines. There's another thing to manage the changes to your state. So changing changing things is like, oh yeah, but it's in code, so we just change the code. Yes, but then you have to think about the whole release process. And the release process goes from, okay, we have a human making a change, how can we keep track of the change? How can we make sure the change happens and things like that? And you mentioned a few. Uh, I want to also mention uh, uh, the DSC workshop that Raymond um, is maintaining. Um, and like we, we've been talking about that uh, a few times. That's just about the change process for you know your data, your configuration data, and how you can just manage this to uh, replicate your state. Whatever you're doing at the end of it, whether you're using the DSC LCM, even if you wanted to have several configurations uh, managed through uh, the DSC workshop and then create uh, guest configuration packages for those, that could work as well. So, um, so yes, the managing the data is the difficult part. Writing, yeah, it's it's not the easy part, but just writing a PSM one with your configuration, it's uh, it's doable. Like it's quite uh, easy compared to managing over time across different people and different machines. Hope that, hope, hope that helped, Marvin. Um, if did, if you have further questions, feel free to ask and feel free to uh, come to the chat and then ask more questions as well. Yeah, no, no, no. That that was helpful. And and again, you know, I'm I'm with you guys. If uh, if we were being allowed to 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 use Azure Policy, <laughs> I would certainly do it. But uh, you know, we got some unique constraints here, and that they just don't want any third party stuff. And um, you know, obviously the local configuration manager, which is why I brought it up. You know, is included on all the boxes, so it's included with it. So that it's, that that was able to you know solve my <laughs> problem for now. Yes, it's very hard. Like when I hear they say like we're not allowed third parties, but then where do you put the limit between third parties? Because the DSC resource is a third party. So are you allowed other third parties or not? So are you allowed? To, so so even if it's part of Windows, so that means you just allowed Windows and nothing else. But what about the scripts that you're writing? Are they considered third parties or not third parties? And if your script are, you know, using something else like applications and things, you know, where do you draw the limit? And and I think like it's always hard to have this if you don't want to have anything uh, that's been, you know, uh, written externally, then you're going to have a very hard time because you know you will have to do it from scratch. So that's why it's always like it's always good to put that in context when you have these discussions with. Uh, usually your security team or all this. Sure, sure. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Um, Michael, you had a, a very good question. Like you said, uh, you would like to hear specific tooling that would help. And that's a very good question. You know, what 
what kind of tooling people would uh, would want to see. So I think so. First of all, I don't know if you've seen the 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 difficulty it is to include PowerShell seven within Windows. So when people say something like, and, and sorry, Marvin, just to just to say like, uh, yeah, we want this because it's uh, not a third party, so it's already installed in Windows, which obviously it's convenient because then you don't have to discuss with your teams that you want to have an external tool. But if it, you know, that's not going to happen. Having, I don't think it's going to happen to have more things added to Windows. But then what tooling would be uh, useful? What kind of scenarios and approach would be useful? And I'm sure Michael would like to hear those kind of things as well. So if you have anything, it doesn't have to be today, but please write them down and then contact Michael. Uh, well, no, I mean, I think uh, I think Jason was was right. I mean, uh, you know, he he mentioned about the guest configuration, and if if that was something that, uh, you know, if if the community and and the PowerShell team or whatever can work together to get that to work internally, so you know, so that you really remove the um, the dependency on Azure, that might be that might be that might be good enough, you know. Okay, I would only I would. Recommend everyone to voice, you know, whatever whatever opinions they have, or voice it, voice it to Michael, voice it to the community, and then we can all discuss that. We are reaching the limit of uh, this call. We will have, I, I don't have the date on top of my head on, available here, but the next one will be in six weeks. Make sure you follow us on social media, so then you will be um, you will be uh, notified when there's a new uh, DSC community call coming up, and then we send reminders. Uh, and if you have uh, things you want to talk about, talk to us in the chat if you want us to cover something, or probably if you want to present something, even if it's just five minutes presentation, feel free to uh, to uh, submit a session through Sessionize, and I will put the link uh, in the chat. If there's uh, nothing else to say, I think we can stop the recording. And then I will stay around a little bit longer if people want to talk. Hey, 